I just got back from E3. Um, I have a little scratchy voice because I'm losing my voice from all the yelling and stuff. Um, but I checked out tons of games at E3. Holy crap, this E3 was really good. Unfortunately, it was a little underwhelming for me. This was my eighth E3, my eighth year of going. And, I mean, I saw some amazing, ridiculously really good games. But nothing was like, holy crap, like that kind of reaction from me. Everything was like, yeah, this looks really cool. But again, nothing blew my mind, which is a little disappointing. Um, I was expecting that because we have all the new consoles coming out this year. But then, in, oh, text. Um, but then at the same time, it kind of, I understand. I think we'll probably get all the holy crap announcements for next-gen console titles next year. So next year, hopefully, is the blow my mind experience of E3. This year was just kind of like a bunch of really cool shit. Anyways, this is my top five favorite games that I saw at E3. We're going to start with number five, which was The Evil Within. Bethesda was my favorite booth this year, and you guys will hear why. Um, but The Evil Within, I was a little skeptical on because the live-action trailer was amazing. I would love to watch a whole film that looks like that live-action trailer. Um, but the game, I had heard from some people who had already been to the demo. It wasn't playable. We just watched somebody play it through that it wasn't very good. So that made me skeptical. So I went in anyways and, and checked out the demo. And at first, I wasn't into it. It felt too Resident Evil for me. I know it's being done by the guy that did some of the original Resident Evil, so of course it's gonna feel like Resident Evil. But it felt too Resident Evil. I mean, I think you're a cop in this game, and we are walking through like a abandoned building of sorts and walking really slow everywhere, kind of ducked and hunched. That's so Resident Evil, I was over it already. And I will say one thing, he walked slow basically through the whole demo. I hope to God the game doesn't force me to walk slow like that through the whole freaking game. Um, so I was, I was over it. But then they got into the part where you, there was actually the enemies. And that is when I fell in love with the game. The character design or the creature and enemy design is amazing. It, like the level he played where we started seeing the enemies, he was hanging upside down. And there was this big butcher looking guy that was kind of like Leatherface, um, just without the mask. And, we had to, and then he got a chainsaw, which was very Resident Evil 4. But, yeah, it got really crazy. Um, it reminded me of, like, the creatures of Silent Hill put to the gameplay of Resident Evil. But then the game did some crazy shit that made me think of Eternal Darkness. Like, he was walking down this hallway, and all of a sudden the hallway went, like, dark. Not dark as in dark as I can't see, but dark almost like the change from light Silent Hill to dark Silent Hill in a flash. And so all of a sudden the hallway was scary. And uh, so he started going down the hallway, and all of a sudden the, it flashed again, and the hallway got much longer. And I was like, oh, wait, this game is totally fucking with our heads like Eternal Darkness. And that's squeaking as Yoshi playing with her brand new toy. She has to tear up any new toy she gets. So then he turns around to look at the super long hallway, and this, this like, rush wave of blood, very much like The Shining, came just like storming at us and right when it got to the character and he just got like overtaken by this wave of blood it flashed again and he was back to like normal life um so that reminded me very much of eternal darkness i need to see more of the game i need to play the game to really get like my full opinions because i need to see how this game controls but for visual sake it's my number five number four came as a surprise for me and that was elder scrolls online I love MMOs. I am so just still in love with Guild Wars 2 right now. I didn't like Skyrim, as a lot of you guys know, and a lot of the death threats that I still get over my Skyrim review. Really, guys? Really? Um, I didn't like Skyrim. And so I went in thinking I wasn't going to like Elder Scrolls Online. I was like, oh, it's just going to be all kind of control bad poorly, and it's just going to look bad, and it's the voice acting's going to be bad. It's just going to be kind of eh, like Skyrim. Oh my god, I was so wrong. Elder Scrolls Online played really well. I had a little bit of trouble with the combat, but again, it is, you know, a Bethesda game, so the combat's not always the best in those. Um, I did have trouble with the combat. I wish the control or the camera was pulled back a little bit more. I think then I wouldn't, like, run up to a character or an enemy, slash at it, and all of a sudden the character, the enemy's behind me, and I have to, like, turn around, slash at it, and then I have to turn around. A little frustrating. I wish... It locked on to something I was attacking at the time a little bit better. In fact, it didn't lock on at all. Um, but that was really my only problem with it. I did two different missions. My first mission I did, of course, was a, was a mission for a dog that ran up to me. 
not really quite remember what he needed me to do, examine something or find something for him, but I did the doggy quest. Uh, I was able to create my own character. The devs thought it was funny that I started making her look like me and then I asked why I couldn't make her boobs bigger. Cause I could like slide it up, but they didn't really get that much bigger. Um, and they said, maybe we'll have to tweak that so you can have bigger boobs. Yes, devs, please. I want massive, ginormous, break the game, big boobs. Um, other than having the trouble with the combat, I thought everything, the UI and um, how I was able to skill up and everything was very intuitive and just felt natural and felt like a really good RPG. We were able to party up. I know that the it will have first person. It just wasn't working for the build we played. And a lot of you on Twitter wanted to know what I played it on, and I played it on PC. This is a game I would definitely be getting, absolutely, and we're all going to play together, and we're going to go on raids, and go in dungeons, and do quests for dogs together. Number three was one that all of you said I would really, really like, and you guys were right, and that was Destiny. Destiny looks like a mashup between Halo, Mass Effect, and Borderlands, and I fucking love it. It was so awesome. There was no playable, no hands-on, which was disappointing, um, but we did get to see you know, him playing through single player for a little while, and then he was joined by a few other of the devs and stuff, and then they kind of went on this big party mission together, and it just looks awesome. I love the weapons. The weapons were a little bit over the top, a little bit ridiculous, kind of like Borderlands. I like, I love games that have loot drops, because I love looting things. Um, it looked a lot like Halo, with a little bit of Mass Effect to it. I guess that's where the RPG stuff comes from, is, is the Mass Effect feel. And again, like the loot drops and the kind of ridiculous guns were from um, where the Borderlands feel. So Destiny is another game I would definitely be getting. I can't believe two MMOs made it onto my top five list. It's another game we're all going to be playing together. Number two is one of my old favorite games as a kid, and that's Wolfenstein. This one is Wolfenstein, A New Order, and it's another Bethesda game. And what I loved about it was it was like someone took the over-the-top ridiculousness of Duke Nukem but made it more serious. So, you know, I'm this huge beefed-up guy. I'm getting these crazy huge weapons. The Nazis are like robot Nazis. And they're the dogs from Wolfenstein are like robot dogs. They're like mech dogs. And um, it's just ridiculous, but ridiculously fun. The weapons are just big and just like manly weapons. I had a great time with it. My favorite part, though, was um, in the demo section, they, we watched this video where we're sitting on a train with this old lady, older lady, and um, she has, like, this, this boy toy, this, like, sexy boy toy of hers. And um, so she makes you play this card game where you have to choose. And she's like, which one, you know, makes you feel uncomfortable? And she shows you a picture of skulls and a picture of spiders. And you have to pick which one. Depending on which one you pick, you could die. She might kill you right then and there. No pressure. No pressure at all. And she's got the gun sitting beside you. And she kind of judges you based on what you pick. But her little boy toy sexy man, um, they start, like, getting turned on in a way. And she grabs his hand under the table and, like, he starts like rubbing on her and stuff from under the table and it's all really uncomfortable because he's obviously doing things and she's getting into it but she's also talking to you about not killing you and um, very very awkward uncomfortable scene but you guys know that's what I love I love awkward and uncomfortable so it sold me with that scene and then getting to play it and loving what I was playing Wolfenstein New Order definitely going to be a day one purchase for me and then, number one, my game of the show. I actually was going through my last day of E3, worried that I wasn't going to, God, my voice is getting worse, worried that I wasn't going to have a game of the show because nothing blew my mind. And that was because I had one more appointment left, and I went and saw, bless you, I went and played Saints Row 4. Oh my God, you guys. Saints Row 4, I'm in love with it. So, so in love with it. I got to play it for a little bit, and... I played with the Wub Wub gun, or the dubstep gun, loved it. Like you're shooting somebody with it and everybody else around it is dancing. And um, why do you see even so much? And um, my favorite was the black hole gun. You shoot it and creates this, you know, a black hole and everything. Cars, scenery, people get sucked into it. Great, great weapon. Um, I love the alien design. I love how it's still, it's still over the top. It's still completely silly. Everything you love about Saints Row anyways. There's no purple dildo, unfortunately, but you do get a purple light sword or lightsaber, basically, and um, 
it's it's awesome. It, it kills them in one in one hit. Love it. I love the game. Um, it is a little bit Saints Row mixed with um, what's the game? Crackdown. Where and, and don't worry, I loved Crackdown. At least I loved Crackdown One. Crackdown Two was eh, but you get like the super jump where you jump and it's almost like defying gravity and you kind of float and you can do this crazy special jump. And then you get crazy fast running speed, which is something else you got in in Crackdown. So it was like controls like Crackdown, but with the over the top and ridiculous and funness of Saints Row. Will you sit still, puppy? Sit still, you. And it was just. I seriously giggled through the whole freaking thing. And when we first started off, I was playing in this part where I was like walking down the presidential hallway and people were coming up to me asking my opinions of things. It was ridiculous. I loved every second of my 30 minute playthrough of Saints Row. I'm so glad that I pre-ordered it. Um, yes, yes, yes. Great, great game. And it's basically my top five games. Ah, stop licking me. My top five games of E3. And really quick, some honorable mentions I wanted to talk about that were really good at E3. First off, my my number one game of show would have actually been Last of Us. I think that would be fair because I, I do already own the game. And it's not fair to pick a game best of show that you already own. So that's why Last of Us didn't win. But if I didn't already own it, Last of Us would have totally been my best game. Another game I want to mention as some of the best was Mario Kart 8. I adored Mario Kart 8. It felt like classic old Mario Kart, but so much more. The, the courses would go upside down. You could be a car or, a, or like Princess Peach had her, her bike. You would, it would turn into a parasail. You could do tricks. Um, you could go underwater. I adored Mario Kart. I loved the Nintendo booth, actually. They had a Mario Kart you could sit in. You could get in, I don't remember the boat's name in Wind Waker, but you could get in Link's boat, any little, little Link hat you'd wear. You could get in a Mario pipe. You could take a picture with a Pikmin. It was just like probably the most fun booth there. Super Mario 3D World was also a lot of fun. It felt a little bit too much like Mario Co-op Brothers, you know, but I adored it still. Four player, um, probably the thing I like about it the most is that I can be Princess Peach and I can turn Princess Peach into a pink kitty cat. Like seriously, do I need to play the game? I did play the game. Um, I actually played it with the beautiful and wonderful friend of mine, Meg Turney. Uh, we played together. But do I really need to play the game? All you have to do is tell me, hey, Rachel, you can be Princess Peach, and you can turn Peach into a pink kitty cat. Done. Sold. I'll buy it. Also, Dead Rising 3 surprised me. As if you had seen my Dead Rising 2 review, I didn't like it. Um, Dead Rising 3 is a little bit darker. It's going to be more tense. It's going to be more kind of like panicky. Way more zombies. But your character is able to craft weapons right there on the spot. Thank God. And um, your weapon lockers. You can access all your weapons from the weapon lockers. Plus more. And it's co-op. And it was just more fast-paced and more just of a tense, darker game than Dead Rising 2 and Open World. So I really enjoyed that as well. Lastly, another really good game I played was Disney Infinity. Um, I played the normal world area where you do the quests and stuff. I played Monsters University. And, you know, I didn't like it at first. I mean, it was Monsters University, not Classic Monsters, and the other sets they had released or announced were Pirates, um, meh, um, Cars 2, and Lone Ranger, which isn't even out yet. So I was disappointed with that because it kind of felt like it was just a marketing tool. They were using all of these new Disney films that they wanted to market and put it into a game, so I didn't like that. Look, I'm covered in dog hair. Um, but then I got to see the toy box. The toy box of Disney Infinity makes the whole purchase of the game worth it. Toy box is basically like open world, little big planet meets Minecraft. You're not mining, but you can make the world do anything. It's four player. You guys can get in there and design it. You can make a racetrack. You can make levels and you can set up sound. You can have like, here's the racetrack thingy. And when someone goes through it, fireworks are set off. But when the fireworks set off, that triggers something else. Like you could really make it do anything. But the really cool part about it was, is it wasn't limited to just new Disney films. They had everything in there. They had Aladdin. They had Alice in Wonderland. They had Cinderella. They had Lion King. Um, Astro Blaster's little seat from Disneyland Ride. They even had rides in there. They had Tron. They had freaking Tron, you guys. Disney Infinity um, was awesome. And I cannot wait to get into that toy box and play with you guys. I had such a great time this year. 
E3 is my favorite time of the year. It's like a huge family reunion. You make new friends. You see friends you only get to see at E3. Um, God, every year E3 is like a life-changing experience or event for me. So it was awesome. And I got to meet tons of you guys. I got to meet so many of you guys. I swear to God, meeting you guys is better than any game I played. Meeting you guys is the highlight of every single con. Um, yeah, you guys are fucking awesome. I love you. I love you guys so, so much. So much. Bye, guys.